Hello, and thank you once again for joining me on my program. You know, one of the things I like to do is to feel as though I'm talking with you, not to you, but with you. And that brought me to a message that God gave me, and He only gave me the title. For a whole 24 hours, I had nothing but the title, and it's called Let's Talk. Just like I feel like some days I want to say to you, you know, let's just talk. So we're going to have a message today entitled, Let's Talk, because thankfully, 24 hours later, he gave me the message. Have you ever gone to someone's house and just knocked on the door and they come and open the door and, they, and you say, let's talk? Maybe it's to work something out. Maybe because there's an issue and you know what? There's nothing that beats just getting face to face with one another and sitting down Maybe it's a friend and working through something and you just say, let's talk. Or maybe you've been mulling something over in your mind that you're, you're thinking about doing, you want to do, but you just need a friend to run it by. Your spouse or your friend, someone close. And so you go to them and you say, let's talk. And usually if they can at all, they'll stop what they're doing. They'll sit down with you and just let you begin to share what's on your heart. And sometimes they'll interact and share the same with you and to encourage you. Well, I believe God gave us a couple of scenarios just now that I think that would set the stage for let's talk. In fact, God was the first one that said let's talk. If you were to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, the very beginning, the Garden of Eden, it says that God came down in the cool of the evening and he walked with Adam and there they communed. They had com uh, conversation with one another. Now it could have been, because we don't know, it could have been that Adam was busy giving the report about the garden. Well, you know, the, the peas and the beans and the corn, they're growing so beautifully today, dear God. They're growing great. It could have been. Or Adam may have said, well, you know, F Father God, the animals have all just gathered around today and they're, they've been so good. They, it could have been. But I wonder also if God was telling Adam his plans. And you know, Adam, I have plans to bless man. Generation after generation after generation, Adam, you just, you can't imagine, Adam, all the things I want to give to man and the generations to come that I can raise up to be armors for me. And Adam and Eve and God would be excited about the future of this earth because there was a communion going on, a conversation, a walking in the cool of the evening. Now, I think it's also important to understand that God did not call Adam up to heaven to have this walk and conversation. God initiated the walk. He came down to earth and met with his creation. God longed to be with his creation. It was his desire. I think it was even his joy to be with his creation. God sought out man. We can't go to him, but he comes to us. The purpose of showing you the garden, I believe, was to show you the relationship God desires. You see, it was the first example that God immediately poured into my spirit when he began to give me this message today a relationship with man, his created being, the ones that he created. He wants to have a relationship. Now, I believe that this particular piece gives us the cry of the Father's heart, the yearning. I want to look at one more Old Testament story, and it's actually found in Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. It's a place where we find that Abraham communed with 
God. And God had a special name for Abraham that I love. God said Abraham was his friend. Abraham was his friend. How would you like to be able to think in the depths of your heart, God loves me so much and he's my friend, my friend. What do we do with friends? We commune, we talk. Okay. In Genesis 18 and 1, then the Lord appeared to him, Abraham, by the terabith trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. What we see is Abraham looks out and he sees three heavenly beings walking his way. He recognizes that in fact they are heavenly. And he runs out immediately and bows before them and asks them to please stay at his tent, his home. And he says, I'll prepare a meal for you. Let me wash your feet. You see, Abraham ran out and greeted the father. He brought him in to his tent and he made him feel warmed and welcome and wanted. I think that this whole piece right now in this message today, remember I said it's about a relationship God wants to have with us. One of the reasons that God called Abraham friend was because he was wanted by Abraham. He was welcomed. He was welcomed into his tent. He was let me help you. Have you ever thought that maybe God just enjoys conversation with us? What if you had a friend who, who never, ever heard your side, who just let you talk? Talk, I mean, who just talked at you, at you. Talk, 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 talk. And they never said, how was your day? How was your day? Well, you know, that's sort of what Abraham did. Here, Father, let me wash your feet. And how was your day? Welcome. Let me fix you a meal. Sometimes we just need to pay attention to God and just tell him that we love him and we're so thankful to know him. And God, I hope you've had a great day. I know it sounds so small, but you know when it comes from the heart of love, a friendship, we want the other one to have had a great, awesome day powerful day. God may be wanting to tell us, you know, I had so many birthed into the kingdom today. No telling what all he would tell us if we would just sit and listen to the Father. He desires to be among us. And then I want us to go on into John chapter 15, verse 15. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You know, God took the word and he gave it as an inspired word of God to let us know what's going on. He said, I'm going to tell you everything. It's in the word. So his word began to be made available to us. We can hear the Father if we'll listen, if we'll read the word and listen. The Holy Spirit was sent to give us comfort and to guide us and to teach us into all and bring us into all understanding. But we must once again do as Abraham did, just bow before the Spirit and say, teach me, come into my tent and let us talk together. One of the ways to maintain that friendship, folks, is just simply to carry on a communication. Oh, we get to thinking, you know, I can't talk to God. He's up here and I'm down here and I'm just this little and he's this big. I've heard so often, even this week, how God is God and I am little and he is busy and my things don't really count. God sent me today to tell you everything of your life is of interest to him. He'll move heaven and earth to come down to you today if you'll just give him time and welcome him into your presence today. 
He wants to be in the midst of his children. And then there's another account found in Luke 24. It's the whole story is in 13 through 32, those verses. But let's narrow it down to 15 through 19. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is, that, is it that you're having one with the other as you walk and sad? Then one of those whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Now they're referring to the crucifixion. Jesus was placed in the tomb. They've just lost their earthly king in their mind. He was earthly in their mind. Jesus had much more in his mind for them. So he took time to come and enter on their road. They didn't recognize him because he wasn't what they were looking for. They saw Christ as the one that was buried. They didn't see him as alive and risen king. Watch what happens. And he said to them, what things? Now I want to ask you, he, Jesus asked some important questions. What kind of conversation is that that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? What kind of conversation are you holding, folks, today? What kind of conversation do we hold with one another as we're walking? Do we recognize that Jesus came to walk with us? He said, what things? Here I am, folks. What things? What things went on besides the resurrection of the Jesus Christ, the King of kings, Lord of lords? What kind of conversation are we having today? Measure your conversation against the word. Jesus said, I'm here. I'm alive. I'm real. What kind of conversations are you having today? Oh, Jesus wants to just say to you, Let's talk. Talk with me today, he says. Spend time with me. I have come to you. They ask him to stay, and we know that he did. And then they recognize they had been in the presence of the Lord. When you ask Jesus to stay, you'll know the same. Thank you for joining me. We hope you've enjoyed Fresh Manna for today with Evangelist D. Levins. For more from Dee, read The Long, Long Night, The Story of Destiny, and Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her books at dlevins.com.